Hooey. <laughs> um. First, let me say this. Shalom. Shalom. You know, after, after all this truth, you know, I mean, it's a lot of truth now. And yet, we still have people that want to believe the lie. Now, I'm going to say it. Our king. Yeah, where, where, where's my camera? Let me look in this camera. <laughs> All right, there we go. Our king was not crucified on no Good Friday. No, never. No, not our king. Shalom, shalom. I see y'all coming in the room. You know, this is my, you know, it's Shabbat for me. Normally, I'm just chilling, but when you got, when you got brothers like, uh, like you run, talking about, you got to say something. <laughs> All day long, I've been just trying to relax and chill, and I just keep hearing his voice. You got to say something. <laughs> But I've been telling Israel for 13 years. Our king was not crucified on no so-called Good Friday. No. Mm -mm. Let me sit up a little bit. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Whew, all right, here we go. I can see y'all in the room. Can y'all um, place a seven if you can see me or hear me all right? I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to look in the chat, see if I see any sevens. But I do see some blue wrenches. I think that was just Z that went across the room. Oh, shalom, shalom. Okay, I see the sevens. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our king. Yo, Hoshua Hamashiach was not crucified on no, on no Good Friday. First of all, before I even get into that, do you see how sickening that is? Think about the sick mind. Think about the satanic mind. That if it was true that he died, on that Friday, if it was true, what satanic, demonic spawn of the devil called that day good? You see what happens when your eyes, when your eyes wake up, when your eyes open up and you start waking up? You think about things like that, like you got to be a sick individual. I'm talking about sick to survey the crucifixion of our king and look at the details of crucifixion and how they took our king and arrested him and then beat him and mocked him and scourged him and then beat him some more, and then jailed him, and then drug him out to the praetorium, then questioned him, and then put him back in jail, and then mocked him some more, and then turned him over to the authorities for him to carry his own crossbeam, and he's bloody, and he's beaten, and he's weary, and he's worn, and yonder he goes, up the hill shaped like a skull to die on behalf 
of the covenant of the house of Israel. And there he's nailed between two thieves. And the blood is coming down from his head to his hands. It pierced his side, his feet. And then some heathen look on that scene and say, that was good. We should call that good Friday. Oh, because of that white supremacy. Okay, so when, it's just like when they was lynching us. You know, like after church, how they would go out and they would all gather around and have a picnic and, and have a party and watch Negroes swinging from trees and, 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 and they would all clap and be smiling and taking pictures. And I, I done showed y'all. Oh, so that's what you mean. Whenever you see a Negro hanging from a tree, that's a good day for you, huh? And then you got our poor step and fetched preachers and pastors. I've been trying to tell them. Calling it Good Friday. How can you look up on that day at all? If anything, that was the worst day. That was the worst day in the history of, of all humanity. When the Holy One of the Most High Yah, the visible image of the invisible Yah, the sinless Lamb of Yah slain before the foundation of the world, was crucified by the hands of wicked and evil men. Our king didn't die on no Good Friday. Now, if y'all understand what Demory is saying, again, I'm I'm not gonna be long in the room. Just gonna fix some things. I gotta talk to the whole world. Uh, if you can hear me and see me, okay. Uh, just place a seven. I want I want to say this. If you can still see me, you can still hear me, all right? Please place another seven in the chat. I just want to say something. How much longer are we going to keep pushing the lies? How much longer are we going to keep perpetuating um, these satanic and demonic doctrines that come up out that Catholic and Christian church. How much longer are you going to allow them to make fun of you? Laughing at you. Moe, what do you mean by that? You can't count to three. Come on, man, stop. You can't count to three. One, two, three. You can't count three days. One, two, three days. And then count three nights. One, two, three nights. So that right there, that right there is going to take. I, I looked at one of the heathen websites today. So that right there is going to take 15 pages to explain. Yes, I looked it up today. One heathen tried to explain three days and three nights. His, his document was 15 pages long. Why? Because you can't get three days and three nights from dying on Friday night and getting up early Sunday morning. It ain't no way, no how. So he just figured, the, if, the more I write, the more I write. The more confusing I make everybody and I just stop writing. You don't need no 15 pages to explain that you can't die on Friday night, get up Sunday morning and be in the grave three days and three nights no matter how you slice it. 
They make mockery of you and laugh behind your back. It, 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 it's not that hard. <laughs> I, I keep telling you, the Bible was, is not a difficult book. It's not difficult like you think it is. The Bible is a, is a book that was meant to be understood. It was written to be understood. If you understand that, <laughs> if you understand that, put a 100. I want to, I want to talk about a couple things. I'm going to get out the room. You know, it's getting evening here. Wait a minute, and the season changing. Coming a little closer. Coming a little closer to that. <laughs> Woo! Y'all about to see some things. I'm going to mention it tomorrow. I'll be in the room tomorrow morning if I by y'all allows us. I'm going to get a little bit into that eclipse that's coming and the effect it's having on the weather right now all over the world. Okay, where was I? Oh, let's talk about my king. Talk about our king. Um, the fact that someone's trying to convince you that a person could die on Friday and be in the grave Friday night and be in the grave Saturday night and get up early Sunday morning and get Three days and three nights, it's impossible, and you know it. So without going too deep, because it's not deep, I do want to say this. Our king didn't die on those so-called Good Friday and get up on those so-called Easter Sunday morning. Both, let me set up again. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> Both Good Friday, sunrise service, and Easter Sunday morning, all of that is completely and utterly pagan. There is nothing in our scripture that even remotely tell us. That we should be having a, 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 a Friday called Good Friday and having a sunrise service on Sunday morning talking about three days and three nights. It's not in the Bible. I remember I was talking to a real good friend of mine. Matter of fact, I consider him my brother. And I said, hey, man, our king... He's a pastor too, big time pastor. I said, hey man, our king didn't, didn't die on Friday night and then get up Sunday morning. Uh, you know what he said to me? I'm gonna have to uh, agree to disagree. And because he's my brother, you know, we talk to each other. I said, nigga, you can't agree to disagree. You can't agree to disagree on facts. You got to agree on the fact that you can't die on Friday night and get up Sunday morning. Ain't no agreeing to disagree on that. How do you do that? That's not the, that. You can't use that phrase when you want to talk about what is true and what's not. Hey, man, one plus one is two. Oh, I think I'm going to agree to disagree on that. Hey, bud, that bright light in the sky, that's the sun. Hmm, I'm going to agree to disagree on that. Hey, bud, that, that, that shining, ah, silver light in the night, that's what we call the moon. I, I, I think I'm going to, you know, when it comes, I think I'm going to agree to disagree on that. <laughs> Hell, boy. No wonder our congregations are so lost. You can't agree to disagree on a fact. What you're supposed to do when you're in this business of helping to wake up the house of Israel and teach the word of Yah, 
what we have to do is that when we see something that doesn't line up, if it's man-made tradition, what we're supposed to do is say, we need to research it and then find out why. Because the Bible's true and man's a liar. The Bible ain't never going to be a lie and man going to be true. Never. So if, if man say three days and three nights, starting on Friday night, <laughs> you already know he a liar. We ain't got to go no further than that. So now we got to figure out then, which is simple. Really, I'm going to show it to you. How long was our king, y'all? Now look, I don't know nothing about Cesar Bourget's images. I don't know nothing about no blonde hair, blue eyes, something that came down out of Europe and did some things. I don't know. Because I don't follow blonde hair, blue eyes, Cesar Bourget images. I follow my king. So I can't, I can't go with those images. I'm only going to go with the Bible and with Torah. That's all I got. Okay. Matthew, Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to start at 34 just because I feel like it. Matthew chapter 12 verse uh, 34. Oh, e e oh, generation of vipers. <laughs> Toki. Yeah, oh, generation of vipers. That's what you are. How can you, being evil, speak good thing? How is it possible? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Yeah, you just don't want to obey the Torah. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You better believe it. All these idle words, these lying words. They actually had services today called Good Friday Services all over the country. And they can't lie and say they don't know because I told them. If not, nobody else, and I know people, every, I know all of us have been telling them, but I'm saying, I'm speaking for me. I've told them, stop doing that. And I just got educated. I'm educated. <laughs> I said, hey, y'all, you worship in Tammuz. You worship in Estarte. And you worship in the sun god. Them heathens push that Babylonian worship onto you in captivity. If, if y'all got that. Uh, where are we at? Put a 1,000. I'm, I'm not going to stay too much longer. I just want to show you this. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38. And certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered. Oh, so he said, by your words, you're going to be condemned. So then you had some Pharisees and scribes decide, oh, okay, well, I got to say something. All right, what you got to say? Hey, Master, we, should see a, we will see a sign from you. Now, this ain't no sermon, so I ain't even going to preach. I'm trying to chill. This is leading into my Shabbat time. <laughs> How are you going to ask a sign of a man who ever since he got here been doing nothing but signs? I told y'all I'm a preacher, right? So every time I get to this to this kind of thing, I be wanting to preach because his birth was a sign. He was fulfilling signs. 
before he breathed his last breath. There was a star that come up out the east. Wise men followed that star to the place where he was born. I ain't seen nary a wise man follow another star to not one Hebrew, Israelite, or heathen since. Now the shepherds want to talk. Oh my, I knew I couldn't, I knew I shouldn't have started this. Now, now I hear the shepherd. What about us? We was out abiding in the field, mind our own business, and we looked up, and man, the shaman open, and boy, quiet stand full of angels looking like Hebrew Israelites with dreadlocks and wings, singing and giving praise to the most high. Glory to our by Yah in the highest. Shalom and tov toward all people, all men. Show us a sign. <laughs> really? Lepers clean, blind see, lame is walking, fed 5,000 miles, go on and on and on and on. We want to see a sign. Boy, boy, boy. Whoo, we. So this is what he says to them. An evil and adulterous generation seek it after a sign. He's trying to say, after all that I've already done. And there shall be no sign given to it, but the sign of Jonah. Now, if you saw that, what do we need to put in here? You know what? Because that's verse 39, put in here 3,900. <laughs> yeah, let the world know we studying the Bible tonight. Let the world know we understand the script for ourselves. We don't need not one pig meat. Eating preacher. We don't need no gumbo slopping and supping. I'm talking about dirty gumbo with the pots of abomination in it. We don't need them interpreting our Bible no more. We've been, we woke up. And once we wake up, we can see. And once you can see, then all you got to do is look at it. And all you need is, a, is someone like me. I'm a Maury. I'm also a seer in the house of Israel. All you need me to do is say, all right, let's look at it together, Zion. Let's see what, what it really says. He said, there ain't going to be no sign given to it but the sign of Jonah. There's your... So do you think he's lying? Do you think the king right now is lying? Or do you believe our king is being precise because they want a sign? They want a sign. They want to be able to track it exactly. Show us a sign that you really are who you say you are. That's what they're saying. And he said, I done already showed y'all so many times, oh my. But I tell you what, this wicked and evil, adulterous generation, I will give you another sign. I'll give you one. Jonah. Now, once he said Jonah, right? Uh, everybody knew what he was talking about. There was no more trying to figure out how long he was going to be dead and how long he was going to be buried. No, because everybody knows the book of Jonah. Everybody knows that book. So he gives a reference to a prophet. And let's see what he says. For as Jonah was three Days and three nights. I remember I was talking to another preacher. <laughs> Might have been the same. It was the same preacher, but I've talked to other preachers too. I said, hey, man, three days and three nights. 
You know, one preacher actually came back and said, that's only, that's only mentioned one time in the Bible. I said, what's only mentioned one time in the Bible? Three days and three nights. I knew right there I was dealing with complete spiritual ignorance. I knew it at that point. I said, oh boy. And I knew I had to stop. When I say biblical ignorance, I'm not saying that the person is stupid. I'm saying that when you, when, if you, if a person makes a statement like that to a person who reads the Bible all the time, like I do, I read the Bible all the time. For him to say that it was only in the Bible one time already lets me know he's never really studied all of Scripture. Because the three days and the three nights, first of all, in our text is referenced to Jonah. So right there you see another three days and three nights. So we ain't even got to go no further than that. Don't say this is the only time it's in the Bible because we can go back to Jonah and read his story and we see three days and three nights. Anything else? Oh, my goodness. Do y'all want to talk to my cousin, Paul? You know, when he spoke to those that were in Corinth, he said, brother, let me give you the news about our king. Because there's people out here talking about ain't no resurrection. He says, so, so let me, let me talk about how our king died. How? According to the scriptures. And let me tell y'all, oh, don't do it, more. This is supposed to be just a relaxed conversation with the with the with the world. And let me tell you how he was buried. How? According to the scriptures. And let me tell you how he rose again. How? According to the scriptures. And then someone will tell me that this is only one time in the Bible. And even Shaul said, no, no, them three days and three nights is exactly in line with scripture. His death, burial, and resurrection is the one thing that could not be random. <laughs> I was reading another uh, heathen today earlier. I was trying to figure out what these heathens were saying, and one heathen said, because, you know, they worship Caesar Borgia images. He said, it don't matter when he died. I said, oh, boy. It matters 100% when he died. Y'all don't believe that heathen when he said it don't matter when he died? The reason why they're saying that is because they get frustrated not being able to explain three days and three nights. So when that heathen said, it don't matter when he died, just as long as he died, I wanted to say, well, I can't say what I wanted to say. Exactly on Shabbat. But... I'm going I'm to fix what I wanted to say. I wanted to say, heathen, listen to me. If it don't matter when he died, and it don't matter when he was buried, and it doesn't matter when he rose again, then it doesn't matter that he was our Messiah, and it doesn't matter that we were in a covenant, and it doesn't matter about his blood neither. Because a whole lot of Hebrews died. A whole lot of Hebrew Israelites were crucified. A whole lot of them was buried. It don't matter when he died. <laughs> oh boy. Zion don't believe none of that. It matters more than anything else that he died according to the scripture. And that he was buried according to the scripture. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, not according to church tradition, not according to fable, not according to some Catholic church or some Caesar Bourget image or some Constantine who was a sun worshiper. Oh, my. Or some ignorant. No Bible reading, no Bible knowing. Just 
garbage regurgitating heathen. It don't matter. <laughs> it matters. Why? Because our king, talking about Yehoshua Hamashiach, he has to follow all prophecy. He has to fulfill it. It behooved him to fulfill all prophecy. Verse 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. <laughs> Wait a minute. He, it didn't say he was in there just for a little while. No. Three whole days. And three whole nights, he was in the well belly. Exactly like that. How he was in that well belly for three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights. Where? In the heart of the earth. Now, once again, let me share this to because we be having so many. There's so many sneak listeners come on into the into the chat room, and then there's another ten or twelve thousand sneak listeners that's gonna come in later on, watching the videos and trying to figure out what we're talking about. So let me help them. All right. So let me let me help the, the listeners, the sneak listeners that's coming in the in the chat. Listen, or watching the video. Our king dies as the Passover lamb. So in order to understand the timing of the death, burial, and resurrection of Hamashiach, you must be familiar with Pesach, which is the Passover. Remember, I've told you this. The Greeks didn't write the New Testament. Nobody in the New Testament other than the heathen were, basic, were Greeks. Everybody else were Hebrews. And when you read this story of the crucifixion of Hamashiach, you're going to find out that it's at Passover. And when you study, when you study Passover, you're going to study that there is a day that the lamb is separated from the rest of all of the, uh, uh, yeah, the sheep or the lamb is separated from the rest of the flock. That happens around the 10th. As that lamb or sheep is separated and is prepared for crucifixion, it goes through an examination. I'm just going, I'm just cutting to the chase. Y'all can go back and study what I'm saying. After it has been approved to be a lamb, spotless, without spot or wrinkle, then it is set apart to be sacrificed as the Passover. That was a tradition. So, of course, Hamashiach enters into, into uh, Jerusalem as the Messiah. He's riding on an ass colt. People are saying, Hosanna. The powers that be are saying, man, uh, shut these people up. They don't know what they're talking about. We hate this dude. We don't know nothing about him. And Hamashiach said, if these hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. From that point until the crucifixion, there was nothing but examination of him and his doctrine and his teaching. Fulfilling the type of the lamb to the T until they had to admit they didn't find no fault. They couldn't catch him in that one word. They couldn't bring up one sin. Had nothing on him. Then on the day of the 14th, which is during the day, because we don't have our days switching at midnight. <laughs> our days end when the day is in. So 
At the end of this day, it's going to be evening. That starts our next day. I remember I had some brothers. I ain't going to mention no names because some of them might be in the room right now. <laughs> I had some brothers couldn't catch that concept. I said, would you please pray and ask Yah to unlock your brain? There's a 24-hour cycle to every day. To the complete 24-hour day. And each of those cycles begin and end at sundown. Not in the middle of the night. And if you can understand the middle of the night, I don't understand how you can't get into that sundown. It's easier at sundown. It's the time of transition from light to dark. And, that, and when it gets dark, it starts the next 24-hour cycle. All right? All right, let's, let's, let's just go right there. So when the lamb is slain, it's slain before the sun goes down. Oh, Moray, did you really go there? Oh, yeah. It's slain before the sun goes down. During Passover, you slay the animal before the sun goes down. Do y'all remember the story in, in, in Exodus when they had to take the blood and put it on the doorpost? Why? Because that night, that evening, the death angel was coming. So he told him, look, okay, I'm not going to do that. But you go back and read it. They're told to, to hurry up. You ain't going to have time to, to let that bread rise and all that. Matter of fact, eat, standing up with your shoes on, with your staff in your hand. We getting up out of here. All right? So the symbolism then obviously matches with Hamashiach, where after being examined and tried, right, he was without fault. And Yah actually used a heathen dog face named Pilate who went to hell um, because he was supposed to make a judgment on the Messiah, and he said, I'm going to let y'all do it. I'm going to wash my hands. But he don't know to this day. It ain't, it, ain't a, it ain't a drop of water on earth or in the sky or under the earth that can wash the blood of Hamashiach off that heathen's hands. But anyway, Yah used him to tell the whole world I don't find any fault in this man. So he has what? He has been examined and there is no fault. And yet he is crucified anyway. And when and when they crucified him, and it started getting late in the evening. They said, we got to make sure all of them are dead because we can't have anybody, any dead bodies hanging up on these trees. And we're getting ready to get into the, into the Shabbat part of the Passover, which is what? The very next day after the lamb is slain. So that's why they said we got to get him off the cross before sundown. It was not the weekly Shabbat that y'all will call Saturday. This is the Shabbat that follows the 14th of a bid. It's a rest day. And that was what they were rushing the body down. It was for that first day right there. And then if you do the math, you're going to see that you get a night and then a day. One. A night and a day. Two. A night and a day. Three. And he rises again on the third day, which means what? At the end of Shabbat, which y'all will call Saturday evening. And by the time, you remember the women, they couldn't travel on that Shabbat. Why? There's two Shabbats. They couldn't travel on that Shabbat. So when they got up the next morning, they got up early while it was still dark. 
If you read it, even in the Greek, it says Shabbaton, which means Shabbat. They come a hurrying and a running to the to see the sight, and it was like, "What are these the angels? Are, hey, he ain't here. <laughs> he been gone. Matter of fact, where was y'all? Didn't he tell you when he was gonna die? What time? How long he's gonna be in the grave? And that he was gonna get up." On the third day, according to the scripture, didn't he tell you that? And uh, they, was, they were happy and shocked and reprimanded all at the same time. <laughs> Why didn't you believe him? Now that's the stats according to the scriptures. Now I want to say this and I'm out of this room. Verse 41 says, the men of Nineveh, the who? The men of Nineveh, the who? The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. No. Yes. Y'all have no idea. See, you, you don't realize what you're messing with when you mess with our king, when you're messing with things like the death, burial, and the resurrection, crucifixion. And when you start trying to make that fit into some kind of weird Eurocentric mindset, or this weird new Babylon where you're trying to mix Abaya uh, with Ra and Zeus and all this other kind of madness. He said, the men of Nineveh shall rise up with this generation and shall condemn it. Why? Because they repented. That's your Bible. They repented. At the preaching of Jonah. When Jonah pointed to them that they were wrong, they didn't say, I'm going to do it anyway. They repented. When Jonah told them, you all don't have, have no idea how close the judgment is. They're about to wipe y'all out for your Babylonian worship. They didn't do like y'all. They repented. <laughs> when they heard Jonah hollering, okay, about seven days. Y'all got about seven days. <laughs> they didn't say, we always believe that he died on Friday and got up on Sunday morning. They didn't say that. They didn't say, we always been worshiping Tammuz and Easter Sunday. They didn't say that, did they? No. When they heard Jonah preach the truth to them, They repented, which means they stopped doing that wickedness. And that's why those people are going to rise up against our people in these last days. When I say, I'm talking about these slumber brews and these heathens. Why? Because they repented when they heard Jonah. And then the king say, and let me tell you something. A way better preacher than Jonah is here. Way better. Greater than Jonah. Greater. And Jonah caused the whole nation to stop in their tracks. Boom. Whoa, we're doing wrong. We're about to get killed. K-I-L-T. Let's stop. So the king, the queen, the little princesses and princes, the, the dukes, <laughs> Look, everybody, including the cows, the dog, the cats, the little hamsters, everybody put on sackcloth and ashes. And y'all, 
by his grace, save Nineveh. And that's why they're going to rise up. Now, this generation, they want to keep operating in foolishness. They want to keep operating like they don't know or operating like they ain't heard a preacher or operating like they ain't never read this verse. All right. Keep on. Aren't you, aren't you tired yet of all the lies? I mean, eventually, uh, now I'm going to talk to all the people that are not woke to the truth. But you like on the fence. Are you tired yet? How many more lies got to be exposed? Our king wasn't born on no December 25th. You done did the research like, ah, they lied about that. But what do you do? You say, well, we just picked that day to remember him. But you said that was his birthday though. I know, but we just picked that day. See, you want to hell for that. Uh. Then here come uh, Easter. We telling y'all, no, this ain't got nothing to do with no Easter. It's Passover for us. He dies according to the scriptures. He don't die according to no Easter celebration, no three days. By the way, that, that has to do with the sun laying on a particular plane for three days. That has nothing to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah. Why? Because that's about three days and three nights, and that's about the Passover, that's about unleavened bread, and that's about first fruits. Ain't you tired of getting lied to? They told you that your, that your Elohim was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed European named Caesar Bourget. I know, but what difference do it make? They told you that we were supposed to worship on Sunday instead of the Shabbat. And then you read the Bible like, oh, I'm supposed to be on the Shabbat. And then your response, I know, but what difference does it make? He told us to keep the law forever, but the church said the law been done away. But I know. But what difference does it make? Okay, he told us to eat these foods. These are good for you. This is what he set apart for you. These things are here. Don't eat. I know. But what difference does? Aren't you? When are you gonna get tired of the lies? And when are you gonna get tired of them playing you for fools? Because that's what they're doing. And they laugh at you, believe me, behind closed doors. They're laughing at you. Because their trickeration is still working on you. And knowing good and well, I just happened to, you know, I graduated. I went to a little small school, graduated top of my class. And, and 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 the reason I was at the top of my class is because I could count to three. One, two, three. I know how to count to three days. I know how to count three nights. And I know you can't start on Friday night. Counting three days and three nights and get up early Sunday morning. It's impossible. But dying according to the scriptures as our Passover lamb, it fits perfectly together like hand in glove, like the puzzle piece. Why? Because he is our sacrificial lamb. He is our Passover. And he does way more for us through and by his crucifixion and his shed blood than any ram or goat or cow or ox or turtle dove could have ever done. And yes, it matters because Messiah has to fulfill scripture to the letter. And that's what Shaul was saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he has, he has fulfilled scripture to the letter. Watch this. Not just in his death, not just in his burial, but he also has fulfilled scripture to the letter. Watch. In his resurrection. And 
he shall fulfill scripture to the letter in his return. Don't let them lie to you, Zion. We're too close to the end. We're too near the finish line for us to be hanging on to these European lies any longer. And for those of you who still want to participate in this wicked paganism, shame on you. There's a word over there in the book of the Revelation when you get to the very end, it says, well, it's going to be some that just want to be wicked, let them stay that way. If some want to be filthy, go on and stay like that. In other words, look, after all this preaching and all this teaching, then if that's the way you want to be, then you can just stay the way you are. But understand something, you shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. But those of us who are eagerly awaiting what? Not Easter, you know, Easter eggs and bunnies and nasty pigs and all that junk. What are we waiting on? We're waiting on Passover so that we honor the Lamb of Yah and we honor the sacrifice. And that sacrifice was the sacrifice required by our covenant. And we honor our king who not only had the power to lay his life down. Oh, boy. Yep, I feel the preaching coming. I got to stop now. But he also said, if I have the power to lay it down, I have the power to raise it up again. One love, Zion. I got to go. Support the work of the art. We're full time. Giving you these insights, reading these verses, helping you see scripture in some cases like you've never seen it before. And for some of us who have seen it before, it's given us greater confirmation that what Abba Yah has been showing us is right. And as always, keep looking up for our redemption and our Savior. It draws nigh. Shabbat shalom. Hopefully I can see y'all in the room in the morning. One love. Shalom.